Welcome to the Boscala Safety Induction for the Rio Tinto and LNGC Dredging and Disposal Works project. Boscalis is a leading global service provider in the dredging, maritime infrastructure, and maritime service sectors. Boscalis offers a wide variety of marine services and contracting for the offshore energy sector, including subsea, heavy transport, lifting, installation, and towage. Boscalis operates in around 75 countries across six continents and has approximately 8,500 employees. Some of the equipment used on the Boscalis project shall be the grab dredge, known as the LX2, a backhoe dredger, the Cornelius 1, additionally also a trailer suction hopper dredger, and a cutter suction dredger. As the project continues, other vessels will be brought online. The Kitimat port is an industrial area where contaminants from effluent and service runoff accumulated over time in the sediment of the port basin and adjacent areas. As a result, part of the sediments to be dredged is considered as contaminated material and has to be managed as such. The following soil classifications apply to this project. Hazardous waste, IL plus material exceeding industrial landfill, IL minus material for the industrial landfill, and DAS material, disposal at sea, which is suitable for placement on land or in an approved disposal at sea location. The scope of Rio Tinto works includes removal of debris and obstacles, dredging of the Rio Tinto terminal sea pocket to a level of CD negative 13.5 meters, dredging a trench for Rio Tinto berth to a level of CD negative 15.5 meters, dredging the berth and barge tug pen to a level of CD negative 6.0 meters, transport and onshore placement and management of IL negative and IL plus material originating from the Rio Tinto dredging area, transport and marine placement and management of DAS materials originating from the Rio Tinto dredging area, and environmental monitoring. The LNGC work scope of work includes dredging a stab wedge in front of the sheet piles of the LNG facility to CD negative 10 meters, dredging negative 13.75 meters to facilitate LNG berth one, transport and onshore placement and management of IL negative material originating from the LNGC dredging area, transport and onshore stabilization of IL plus materials originating from the LNGC dredging area, transport and marine placement and management of DAS material originating from the LNGC dredging area, and environmental monitoring. Safety, health, and environmental policy. Our people are our most valuable assets. It is therefore our policy to provide a safe, secure, and healthy working environment for all our employees including some contractors and others engaged in our activities. This incorporates appropriate concern for the protection of the environment we work and live in. At Boscalis, we believe that all injuries and incidents are preventable. Our vision is to have a workplace free of all occupational injuries and illnesses, equipment and property damage, and environmental releases and spills. Hazards you may incur on the project are related to heavy equipment and vehicle traffic, energized power plants, fueling operations, open water, vessel transfers, mooring and unmooring lines, cranes and overhead loads, and open excavations for the dredge disposal sites.
A unique hazard for the project is the potential exposure to hydrogen sulfide gas, H2S. During dredging activities, there is a potential for H2S. All personnel on board the vessels during dredging operations are to have a personal gas detection monitor. H2S awareness will be provided to all vessel crews. The risk assessment process. The first stage, of course, is related to the risk assessment, the RA. Second stage is the development of job hazard analysis, known as JHA. The third stage, the field level hazard assessment, also known as YES. The first stage of the risk assessment is identifying hazards and risks overall for embarking and disembarking vessels, collision of vessels, working in cold climates, mooring and unmooring of lines, housekeeping, slips, trips and falls, working with contaminated soil, and the hazards and risks related to work methodologies. The second stage is to develop a JHA, or Job Hazard Analysis. A JHA is required to be developed for any non-routine activities whereby hazards had not been identified in the safe work methods or identified as high risk in accordance with local legislation. A JHA The third stage is the field level hazard assessment, YES, which includes yourself, equipment, and your surroundings. Based around engaging the brain before the hand or thinking before acting, FLHA is a system that ensures the worker has checked, assessed, and required eliminated all potential risks on his or her worksite prior to commencing the works. The WMS, or Work Method Statement, is used to comprehensively describe work methodology to safely execute the work performed. It shall be developed by the work's managers, superintendents, in consultation with members of the workforce involved in the activity. It is to be reviewed and updated by work's managers and superintendents and approved by the project director. Changes to the approved WMS shall be carried out in accordance with management of change procedure. It is to identify related hazards and potential risks of the activity and documents the required controls to manage hazards to prevent injury to personnel, damages to equipment, or contamination of the environment.
Goal zero, three golden rules which provide framework for expected behavior towards HSSE. You and I will comply with the laws, standards, and procedures, intervene on unsafe or non-compliant actions, and respect our neighbors and coworkers. This is to achieve goal zero, no harms, no leaks. Living and working in Kitimat. This area is home to many indigenous people who live, work, and utilize the land. It is all of our responsibility to be respectful of their lifestyle, traditions, community, and the environment. A short service worker, or SSW, is a person that is new to working in the industry and or has the industry experience but is working in a new job type. All contractors must have a program to ensure that SSW workers are identified appropriately supervised, trained, and managed to prevent incidents such as injury, environmental damage, or property damage. Workers must be able to demonstrate sufficient knowledge of HSSC requirements to their immediate supervisor before removing or replacing the sticker or changing the hard hat color. An overview of the hazardous process and activities must include specific hazards and environmental aspects for area emergency response procedures to include life-saving rules and specific golden rules, knowledge on reporting procedures, the proper selection, usage, and maintenance of PPE, and the use of an FLRA for basic operations. WorkSafe BC General Duties of Employers. Section 115, every employer must ensure the health and safety of all workers working for that employer and any other workers at a workplace at which the employer's work is being carried out and that the workers engaged in the work of that employer are aware of hazards and their responsibilities and duties. WorkSafe BC General Duties of Workers Section 116 Every worker must a take responsible care to protect the worker's health and safety and the health and safety of other persons who may be affected by the workers' acts or emissions at work, and B, carry out his or her work in accordance with established safe work procedures as required by regulations, and C, use or wear protective equipment, devices and clothing as required by the regulations, and D, not engage in horseplay or similar conduct that may endanger the worker or any other person. E, ensure that the worker's ability to work without risk to his or her health or safety or to the health or safety of any person is not impaired by alcohol, drugs, or other causes. After all, it is not only your right, it is your legal responsibility to intervene when unsafe acts or conditions are observed. WorkSafe BC General Duties of Workers, Section 116. Every worker must A, take responsible care to protect the worker's health and safety and the health and safety of other persons who may be affected by the workers' acts or emissions at work, and B, carry out his or her work in accordance with established safe work procedures as required by regulations, and C, use or wear protective equipment, devices and clothing as required by the regulations, and D, not engage in horseplay or similar conduct that may endanger the worker or any other person. E, ensure that the worker's ability to work without risk to his or her health or safety or to the health or safety of any person is not impaired by alcohol, drugs, or other causes. After all, it is not only your right, it is your legal responsibility to intervene when unsafe acts or conditions are observed.
WorkSafe BC Right to Refuse. If a worker has reasonable cause to believe that performing a job or task puts you or someone else at risk, you must not perform the job or task. You must immediately notify your supervisor or employer who will then take the appropriate steps to determine if the work is unsafe and remedy the situation. Safety Responsibilities Managers and supervisors must be proactive in ensuring all HSSE procedures are implemented and complied with. To facilitate HSSE processes and lead by example. To discuss and listen to HSSE concerns. To praise good performance and encourage ongoing improvement. To engage in regular HSSE inspections and reporting processes and to familiarize crews and ensure compliance with plans and procedures. Responsibilities of supervision. They must ensure workers are fit and competent to start the work. They must report all incidents to appropriate boss scalas, construction coordinators, and HSSC on the day of the occurrence discovery. They must provide appropriate supervision to new workers, giving them the adequate knowledge and assess their skill level. Should an incident occur, they must secure the scene. They also perform compliance and quality monitoring of FLRA cards by their crew members. Responsibilities for workers. Workers must inform supervision upon leaving an area, must not take risks or unauthorized shortcuts, must report all incidents, wildlife sightings, hazards, spills, illnesses, and injuries. Contractors must abide by all site rules as well as those set out by other regulatory agencies. Safety Hazard Observation Card, or shock. The following should be noted on the shock cord. If a hazardous condition or act is observed, has the situation been immediately corrected or made safe? The individual witnessing the hazard completes the safety report form, noting what has been done or what improvements could be made. The safety report form is then handed to the supervisor for further action. The supervisor undertakes corrective actions to remove the hazard, noting what actions have been taken. The safety report form is then handed to an HSSC advisor who confirms that the situation has been corrected. The safety report form and corrective actions are entered into the Project Corrective Action Register for further follow-up or recording. Safety, safety hazard, hazard observation, observation card, card shock. shock. The following is a method noted on the shock board and should be if observed. If a hazardous condition or act is observed, has the situation been immediately corrected or made safe? The individual witnessing the hazard completes the safety report form, 
noting what has been done or what improvements could be made. The safety report form is then handed to the supervisor for further action. Safety Hazard Observation Card, or SHOCK. The following should be noted on the SHOCK card. If a hazardous condition or act is observed, has the situation been immediately corrected or made safe? The individual witnessing the hazard completes the safety report form, noting what has been done or what improvements could be made. The safety report form is then handed to the supervisor for further action. The supervisor undertakes corrective actions to remove the hazard, noting what actions have been taken. The safety report form is then handed to an HSSC advisor who confirms that the situation has been corrected. The safety report form and corrective actions are entered into the Project Corrective Action Register for further follow-up or recording. SPEAK Interaction SPEAK stands for STOP, the unsafe to act, observe, decide, and intervene. Positive, comment on the safe behavior. Engage the employee by discussing consequences of the unsafe activities and explore together ways to do the job safely. Agree to work safely. Knowledge, discuss other areas for improvement and ideas. Observation cards. Once you've filled out the card, you can either hand it to your supervisor or place it in the locked observation box for pickup by HSSE. Names are optional. Safety attitude. A good safety attitude is key to keeping yourself and others you work with safe. Don't look for the cheese look for the trap, spot the hazard, assess the risk, make the changes. Our contractor safety program, NINA, stands for no injuries and no accidents. Our safety statement is as follows. Our people are our most valuable assets, making safety a core value. Our goal is no injuries and no accidents. This is embedded in our company's culture and supported through values and rules. All employees, including our subcontractors, are expected to take these values and rules to heart.
Nina values, I am responsible for my own safety. I approach others about working safely. I take action in case of unsafe operations, and if necessary, I will stop the work. I accept feedback about my safety behavior regardless of rank and position. I report all incidents, including near misses, to inform others and build on lessons learned. Nina rules to prepare a risk assessment for each project vessel or location. Obtain a permit to work for defined high risk activities. Make a JHA or job hazard analysis for hazardous non routine activities. Be informed about risk and control measures and be fit for duty and wear the PPE required. My role according to Nina as a manager or supervisor, I will lead by example by demonstrating safety leadership. Create an atmosphere and conditions within the organization where employees are encouraged to work safely and to address safety issues. I ensure compliance with the value and rules for the area of control. My role according to Nina as an employee, always check yourself, equipment and surroundings. Ensure that you're informed about risks and control measures for the job and work environment. Inform your supervisor of hazardous situations and always follow the values and rules. Safety responsibilities. HSSE is everyone's responsibility and is a shared responsibility. Intervene in unsafe behavior and acknowledge good behavior. Communicate effectively. English is the primary language. Report all incidents and hazards to ensure timely action, closeout, and feedback. Always practice continuous improvement. The NINA Recognition and Rewards Program has the following award categories. Demonstrated safety, health, or environmental leadership, reduction of injuries and accidents, continued excellence, and improvement for ideas and innovations. Your participation is crucial to our success. Incident reporting. Reporting, investigation, follow-up, and statistical analysis of work-related incidents and hazardous situations are a core value of the NINA program. It is extremely important to report incidents right away, no matter how minor it may be. Minor incidents, like first aids, can become serious injuries if not examined or properly cleaned for things like infection. Workers can refuse treatment, but this must be documented by the project nurse practitioner. WorkSafe BC will not accept claims if not reported. Incident reporting. The following steps shall occur when reporting an incident. One, shut down your work and safe out the area. Two, notify your supervisor or barge master immediately. Three, activate the Boscalis Emergency Communication and Injury Management Flowchart. Four, if any workers need to seek medical treatment, the worker or workers will need to be taken to medical facility by management. Five, freeze the scene. This will allow the investigation team to capture as much information as possible. Six, witness statements forms must be filled out so that the details of the investigation can be investigated. The investigation procedure. The project director and HSSC manager will review all hazards, near misses, and incident notification reports. Boscalis incident report investigations shall include as a minimum, a summary of events, details of all witnesses, including statements and photos, will identify contributing factors, identify root causes, identify opportunities for improvement, and must have a smart action plan which means it will be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely.
Safety communications, toolbox meetings, are to be conducted before each shift. Supervisors will conduct a pre-start briefing. Pre-start meeting covers the previous day's incidents, issues, learnings, and details of operations or activities that will be carried out for the day, including risks and weather conditions. Safety meetings, minimum weekly, are to provide information about on-site issues, including general health and safety topics, such as incidents or issues that have occurred, outcomes from any investigations to prevent incidents from reoccurring, and general subjects of interest. Safety meetings. Monthly safety leadership meetings are a timeout for safety. Topics can include the need a moment, incident and lessons learned, safety observations, results of HSSE audits, inspections, and random spot checks, review of HSSE performance, major changes in planned activities or working conditions, HSSE concerns or encountered problems, and status of actions on the HSSC Action Tracking Register. The Company Safety Program. As Boscalis, we embrace and promote starting strong and staying strong. Goal zero, no harms and no leaks. The 12 life-saving rules. The Company Safety Program aligns with Boscalis' NINA values and rules. Subcontractors must communicate all issues and report incidents through Boscalis. The company life-saving rules are as follows. One, work with a valid work permit when required. Two, Conduct gas tests when required. Three, verify isolation before work begins and use the specified life protecting equipment. Four, obtain authorization before entering a confined space. Five, obtain authorizations before overriding or disabling safety critical equipment. Six, protect yourself against a fall when working in height. Seven, do not walk under a suspended load. Eight, do not smoke outside designated smoking areas. Nine, no alcohol or drugs while working or driving. 10, while driving, do not use your phone and do not exceed speed limits. 11, wear your seatbelt. 12, follow the prescribed journey management plan. Obtain authorizations before entering a confined space. A confined space can contain explosive or poisonous gas or other dangers such as a lack of oxygen. Authorized access keeps you safe. You should confirm with the supervisor that it is safe to start work, confirm with the potential attendant that you can enter, follow the requirements of the work permit. If you are an attendant, you should approve and control access to a confined space, have means of communication with those in the confined space. If you are the supervisor, you should confirm that the requirements of the work permit are in place, confirm that a qualified attendant is present as per the hazard assessment, confirm that gas testing is carried out as per work permit, and confirm that it is safe to start work. Protect yourself against a fall when working at heights. Use fall protection equipment when working outside a protective environment where you can fall over 1.8 meters or six feet to keep you safe. A protective environment includes approved scaffolds, stairs with handrails, and man lifts. You should have authorization to work at height outside a protective environment. You should be aware of what fall protection equipment to use and how to use it, and to check equipment before using it. Make sure to always tie off when out at height outside of a protective environment. 
If you are the supervisor, you should confirm that it is safe to start work at height. Obtain authorization before overriding or disabling safety critical equipment. Safety critical equipment must work correctly to keep you safe. Examples of safety critical equipment include isolation devices, emergency shutdown valves, lockout tagout devices, release valves, fire and gas alarms. You should always obtain authorization from the supervisor or person in charge before overriding or disabling safety critical equipment. If you are the supervisor, you should point out the safety critical equipment in your workplace and confirm the authorization comes from the right level. Verify isolation before work begins and use the specific life protecting equipment. Isolation separates you from dangers such as electricity, pressure, toxic materials, poisonous gas, or radiation in order to keep you safe. Specific life protecting equipment such as breathing apparatus protects you from danger. You should understand the isolations that protect you from the danger. Confirm that isolations are in place and confirm with the supervisor that it is safe to start work. If you are the supervisor, you should confirm isolations are in place, like lock switches or locked access doors. Confirm no stored energy or other dangers remain, and confirm that it is safe to start work. Permit to work. Boscalis and some contractors will utilize company permit to work, PTW system, to control high-risk activities. Onshore will utilize LNGC and offshore vessels to use fleet management system. Examples of high-risk activities for which the PTW system will be used include entering and closing confined spaces, working on energized systems, including lockout and tagout, diving activities, hot work such as cutting, welding, or grinding, bunkering, excavation, working at heights, and other high-risk activities. Drugs and alcohol. The use, sale, dispensing, possession, and or being under the influence of illegal drugs on site are prohibited. The possession, use, or consumption of alcohol is not permitted in the workplace, on the project site, or on board any vessel. Any individual whose fitness for work may be affected by the use of alcohol or drugs or suspected of being under the influence of the alcohol or drugs will be considered unfit for work and managed in accordance with disciplinary processes and receive counseling. The unauthorized possession, use or consumption of drugs or alcohol on the LNG Canada and Rio Tinto port development projects will result in disciplinary action up to and potentially including termination of employment. No smoking. Smoking is not permitted in any of the following areas. All office accommodation, all regional and project offices, all internal spaces of a vessel or dredge, including bridge, offices, control rooms, mess rooms, cabins, and internal recreation areas, such as docks. All contractor and company vehicles. Smoking is only permitted in the designated and clearly indicated smoking areas that include an ashtray and fire extinguisher. Boscalis and subcontractors shall comply with all company site project smoking rules. Personal Protective Equipment or PPE. Appropriate PPE will be made available by project management for all personnel. Employees and visitors are at all times obliged to wear the applicable PPE during the execution of works. The mandatory use of PPE is a condition of employment. Employees are responsible for correct use, storage, maintenance, and timely replacement of all supplied PPE. Site required PPE shall include CSA approved hard hat, approved eyewear, high visibility vests or stripes embedded on work outfits, long sleeves down at all times, long pants, gloves for all work, CSA approved boots, must be six inches from heel to the top of the boot, no exposed caps, 
soles made of vibram, thermoplastic polyurethane must be rated for cold temperature. Hearing protection where required, and PFDs for vessel transfers or within two meters of the water's edge. Eyewear. Specific type of eyewear used will be based on company identified hazards associated with work performed. Dark tinted lenses are prohibited during low light periods or inside buildings. Clear, 50 50, or amber tint lenses are permissible for these circumstances. Photochromatic transitions are allowed. Activities that have an increased risk of foreign body injuries, such as material removal during demolition, Welding, grinding, chop saw work, or any high dust activity must use double eye protection. Hand protection, including elbow down protection when applicable, must be selected and used based on the foreseeable risks associated with the work, the environment, and must be maintained in good working condition. A minimum cut resistant level 3 glove must be used when using knives and or handling sharp objects such as cladding and banding. Activities that expose a worker to continuous vibration such as jumping jacks or plate tampers must assess the need for anti-vibration gloves. Chemical resistant gloves must be used in accordance to the chemical being handled and the protection recommended as per the SDS. The rules of the road are in place to protect us from serious harm. Employees driving on a regular basis will be exposed to a high risk activity that will require defensive and winter driver training. It is the expectation of every employee on site to wear a seatbelt, obey posted traffic signs and speed limits, and to never use a cell phone while driving. This includes the use of hand-free systems. No passing of buses, when loading or unloading of passengers with four-way flashers on. Aggressive driving behavior, example is road rage, will not be tolerated. Designated crosswalks. For your safety, please ensure to use the designated crosswalks. Check for oncoming vehicles and equipment and make visual eye contact with the operator prior to crossing. Flagging and tagging. All flagging erected will have a hazard identification tag affixed. Make sure to apply the appropriate tag for the hazard. Tags will contain the following information, the company name and the applier's name, the radio band or telephone number, installation date of flagging, and identification of the hazard. Example, overhead work. Flagging. Yellow or caution. This type of flagging provides a warning that a hazard exists in the area. Yellow caution flagging can be crossed by personnel other than those that installed it, but increased awareness of the surrounding work area is required. 
Red flagging indicates an immediate dangerous hazard exists. Only the direct crew involved with the job are allowed in. Others must contact the owner prior to entry. They must be immediately removed once your work is done and the area is safe. Wildlife interactions. We can all do our part in reducing our interactions with wildlife by adhering to the following rules. Do not harass or feed wildlife. This is a prohibited action as subject to disciplinary action, which includes dismissal. Practice good housekeeping on site. Use garbage bins with latched steel lids and empty them regularly. Keep entrances to lunch trailers, buildings, and compound yards closed. Wildlife reporting. Report all wildlife sightings to your supervisor. Wildlife reporting cards can be available from Boscalis and or LNGC. Consequences for rule violation. Anytime a worker contravenes a life-saving rule, golden rule, or prohibited action, an investigation will be conducted. Based on the findings of the investigation, any individuals found in breach of the life-saving rules or golden rules will be subject to disciplinary policy, up to and including termination. Disciplinary actions can be verbal, written, final written, dismissal, or immediate dismissal. Bullying and harassment. Boscalis is committed to an environment for work which upholds the dignity and respect of the individual and which supports an environment which is free of any form of harassment, intimidation, or bullying. Bullying and harassment is not acceptable or tolerated in this workplace. All potential bullying and harassment complaints will be investigated with integrity and confidentiality. This is a zero tolerance policy with workplace violence, harassment, or bullying. Safe Transfer of Personnel, Part 1. The master and deckhand shall establish communications with the other marine craft or vessels and maintain contact throughout transfers. Personnel are to transfer safely or don't transfer at all. Personnel who do not feel they have the confidence, competence, or fitness to undertake the transfer must speak up and should not transfer. Provide a helping hand to those who are in need. One person at a time. Keep embarkation stations free of obstacles at all times. The master and deckhand instructions must be followed at all times. Safe transfer of personnel, part two. Never attempt to board or leave a vessel by jumping on or from the quay onto the marine craft or vessel. Choose correct timing for embarking or disembarking when the vessels are moving in the seaway. Persons transferring shall not carry anything in their hands. Hands must be free to access the vessel. Personnel are to be seated on the crew transfer vessel at all times until instructed otherwise. Personnel are to move away from the point of embarkation, allowing the next person to transfer safely. Wearing an approved personal flotation device, or PFD, is mandatory during all transfers. The Kitimat LNGC site follows strict protocols for managing on-site water due to the environmental sensitivities adjacent to the footprint. Absolutely no diversion or discharge of water shall be conducted without prior consent from on-site environmental representatives. Refer to your company's Scope Specific Environmental Management Plan, or EMP, for more information regarding the management of on-site water. Why do we have environmental management? 
to prevent environmental impact, to control all water, rain and runoff, to test and treat all water prior to releasing to the environment, to achieve the right balance between industry, economics, and the environment. Also for regulatory requirements, ensuring that matters important to the environment are thoroughly considered in any decisions made by federal agencies legally and responsibly. To avoid prosecution, which may result in fines or imprisonment. To prevent expensive remedial operations. Additionally, social requirements. To meet community standards and shareholder expectations. To foster good government relationships. And to maintain our company reputation. It is also good business management. Potential impacts for concern. Contaminated sediments get stirred up and resuspended during dredging operations. These contaminants are then reintroduced into the marine ecosystem from the bottom up. When we harm the environment, we harm ourselves. Resuspending sediments also suffocates marine organisms and habitats, again affecting the food web. Eelgrass beds are vital habitats, acting as nurseries and food sources. Contaminated material affects microbes. Benefic inverts, such as worms, filter feeders, such as clams and mussels, fish and fish larvae, all the way up to the whales, bears, and humans. Impacts on marine mammals, collisions, sound, and behavior. Environmental concerns. Potential impacts of concern are raised turbidity due to dredging and potential spread of contaminants. The impacts on fish, fish larvae, and spawning. Impacts on marine animals due to collision and sound. Mitigating measures used are dredging methods to minimize turbidity. Disposal on shore of contaminated sediments. No in-water works from February 15th to September 1st. Standoff procedures for vessels are used to prevent collisions with marine mammals. Marine mammal observers are used to ensure no marine mammals are present in marine mammal exclusion zones before and during startup of noisy works such as pile driving. Environmental management plans developed by LNG Canada and Rio Tinto to assess potential environmental impacts. They outline management procedures that apply to everyone. You can find a copy of the EMPs from the environmental team or site manager.
Marine monitoring activities. Sedimentation meters are installed at the eel grass beds near the Rio Tinto, Berth, and Kitimat village. They will be visible during low tide when the eel grass beds are above water. A pole with solar panels and data transmission are installed next to them so data can be collected remotely without damage to the eel grass. Spill response procedure. In the event of a spill, a fast response is vital. Evacuate the area if the spill can be harmful. Stop the spill from reaching drains, open ground, or sensitive area using granules, pads, or booms. Be sure to protect drains. Contact the emergency spill contractor if it is a large spill that cannot be dealt with by the site team and poses a significant environmental risk. Ensure that site management have been informed of the incident. All spillages must be reported. Use absorbents to soak up the spill and place all spill mats into plastic bags. Remember, all contaminated materials from a spillage incident need to be disposed of as a hazardous waste appropriately. Environmental compliance. What can you do to help? Report near misses and incidents. Report all spills or leaks. Report contact or interactions made with fauna. Keep your work area and tools and equipment clean. Listen and act to environmental monitors. They are here to help us care for the environment and stay compliant. If you don't know the answer or if in doubt, please ask. Environmental monitors. The environmental monitors are qualified professionals or qualified professionals in training and with demonstrated experience and knowledge of environmental monitoring for construction projects in the province of BC. The environmental monitor has the authority to stop project work that does not comply with or is in immediate danger of not complying with. The terms and conditions of the environmental assessment certificates the mitigation measures described in the EMPs required by the EAC, or any approvals, authorizations, or other regulatory requirements applicable to the project. Waste management. Waste is to be separated and segregated into the following categories. Household wastes such as paper, food, plastics, or other domestic wastes. Sewage. Chemical waste. 
construction waste such as wood and metal, and filters and oil waste. Waste management for chemical and oil waste. They are to be stored in leak-proof drums in a containment system. Discharging oil into the sea is strictly prohibited. This also includes oily water. Any chemical and oil spills must be reported immediately. Chemical and oil spill kits are available at various locations, onboard vessels, project work sites, and within transport vehicles. Identify hazardous wastes and store according to COSHH. Waste management for vessels. Waste from vessels and vessel-specific garbage management plan include disposal of waste at sea and any quantity is strictly prohibited. Untreated sewage water disposal at sea is strictly prohibited. All waste is to be separated into labeled and closed containers. Personnel intended to handle waste must be aware about the hazards through induction or toolbox talks and must be wearing suitable personal protective equipment, according to the SDS. Boscalis will use regulatory certified and approved waste collectors to treat and dispose of waste. We'll keep a waste treatment register to manage and track waste flows. We'll participate with recycling. Emergency scenarios are as follows, but not limited to Preferred injury management pathways, fire response actions for both onshore and offshore, near shore assistance for a medical emergency, man overboard, search and rescue, grounding, vessel collision, abandoning ship, security emergency, and marine and land pollution.
Emergency Preparedness. Boscalis Emergency Spill Response Plans cover Emergency Response Framework, Emergency Response Roles and Responsibilities, Levels of Emergency, Oil Spills, Emergency Scenarios, the Boscalis Emergency Flowchart, the Injury Management Flowchart, Project Contact Numbers, and External Contact Numbers. Emergency Preparedness. The first responsibility of an individual discovering or involved in an emergency is the safety of themselves and their fellow employees in the immediate area. The second responsibility is to communicate the emergency to others in surrounding areas. The persons witnessing or involved in an emergency shall immediately contact emergency services using the following found on the next slide. In the event of an emergency, dial 250-639-7234 from any office or cell phone. Ensure you indicate your name. Why are you making the emergency call, such as fire, medical, or rescue? Provide the exact location of the emergency. And where possible, have an escort meet emergency services at a designated meeting point. Ensure you review your construction EPP. In the unlikely event that nobody responds, alternate communications such as 911 shall be used. Contact the immediate foreman, general foreman, supervisor, or other management working in the area. Contact the area HSSE advisor. Ensure you have arranged an escort and have them meet emergency services at the designated meeting point. Fire for emergency preparedness. If you are properly trained, qualified, and it is safe to do so, you should do the following. Try to prevent further injury to employee or employees. Avoid leaving injured or disorientated employees by themselves unless this is necessary to ensure your own safety. Safe out the area to prevent further damage to equipment. Provide first aid to an injured employee only if you are qualified to do so and if your own safety is not at risk. Attempt to extinguish a small fire only if you have received proper training on fire extinguishers. Security, Onshore and Marine Security Management Plan. The project director is ultimately responsible for security on the project. Vessel masters are responsible for all aspects of security related to the project on board the vessel during mobilization or demobilization and execution of the works. All ISM vessels comply with the requirements of the International Shipping Port Security Code. All crew vessels and other small vessels will be made aware of land side and water side restricted zones. Contractor personnel will be encouraged to remain vigilant and report any breaches of security. Season 1 Lessons Learned What we need to improve on for Season 2 Completion of work method statements and risk assessments must be performed earlier. Provide clarity and training to supervisors for understanding roles and responsibilities. Provide workforce with environmental commitments for compliance. Improve on investigation reporting and closeout times. Communicate vessel boarding protocols. Increase the awareness and participation in hazard identification program, the shock program. 
increase awareness towards spill containment, rainwater management, and turbidity control. Remember to let your supervision know all injuries or illnesses, near misses, hazard identifications, environmental spills, unsafe acts and conditions, wildlife sightings, and security concerns. These must be reported as soon as possible to your supervisor. 